We're still down 118 points on the Sensex. We'll take a look at the Tech Mahindra stock. Uh, at the lowest point of the day, it hit 1030. It's at 1036 right now. Still down by 9%. The lowest point of the day, just a shade over 10%. Why is the market reading the numbers the way it is and uh, what's the management's call on uh, these numbers and the road forward? Vineet Nair, uh, the man who's heading the company, joins us from more perspective uh, on those numbers. Vineet, morning. Thanks so much for taking time out. Uh, how do you think the market or why do you think the market is reacting the way it is? You've come out with a 3%, uh, 4% growth in sales, nearly a 2.5% growth in revenues. But utilization levels have fallen by 2% and margins by nearly 2%. Do you think this is a bit of an overreaction from the market standpoint? I would uh, say that it is a bit of an overreaction because I thought we were very happy with the results in dollar terms. We had gone up by 7% quarter on quarter sequentially. Uh, uh, our profits were also up. Uh, so we didn't rec uh, realize that. I think what has uh, happened is, A, uh, let's look at utilization, for example. Uh, the, because we are anticipating growth, we have hired people. This is the time when people come in. We hired about two to 3,000 people. They have to be trained before they can be put in. So it's more an indication. Normally, uh, uh, there is a fall in utilization at, at this point of time, and then it goes up in the next two quarters. And we thought uh, that the market would uh, understand that. Uh, the other great news for us, I think, which perhaps has been completely ignored, is that we got a large payment from BT in relation to a particular contract, uh, Barcelona. And on the basis of which we have been able to retire our debt substantially, uh, the debt we took when we acquired Satyam, Satyam was basically a leveraged acquisition where we had used our balance sheet for raising a fair amount of debt. We took close to 3,000 crores of debt, uh, which would by this time be less than 1,400 crores. So in many ways, I'm ecstatic that the uh, debt overhang has disappeared. And over the next two years, we expect to um, uh, completely eliminate debt and come back to being what we are. We always have been a debt-free company. So I thought this would be taken as a good news. But again, uh, predicting how the market behaves is not my job. It's really Rahul, folks like you who do it. <laughs> uh, so I'm a bit, as I said, I'm a bit confused at this point of time. But that's all right. Uh, it, my job is to make the company do well. I thought we had on that path. We had been consistently on that path, and these ups and downs come and go. We leave the forecasting to people with a better knowledge than us. Uh, we, need, we just report on what the facts are out there. But even so, uh, just a couple of important points that you raised. Uh, do you think that utilization levels uh, in the quarter that we're currently talking in, the fourth quarter of this financial year, will inch up back to 75% or beyond or will it take a little more time? And subsequently, you spoke about hiring. Was it wage costs that impacted margins by 2%? And similarly, will you be able to make up this 2% in this quarter? Or uh, will that also have to wait for a little more time? So, uh, wage cost only partially explain it. The other fact is that uh, is that in terms of the what has happened to sterling, the value of sterling has uh, GBP has come down. That impacted by almost one uh, percent. Uh, Go ahead, when so can hear you. That was one, and this is cyclical. And uh, this is utterly cyclical, and I think in the next quarter you will see utilization going up once again. Though please also understand that seven, uh, our current level of utilization is one of the best in the country. I mean, you compare it on an industry basis, it's basically around 70-71% in good companies. We are pretty good at this point of time, but at 75, we are retouching really the ceiling of utilization. It is not healthy for us to go beyond that. 
We need you brought up BT in your earlier answer, and I'd actually like to focus on the BT account with you for a little bit because it's still accounting for almost 46% of your total revenues. Have you restructured contracts, long-term contracts with BT, and has there been a one-time one payment from BT for the restructuring mm -hmm. of contracts? What's the accounting treatment for this payment? Has it been amortized over the next couple of quarters? Yeah, uh, let me. We had two or three. Uh, we had two long-term contracts with BT. Uh, the needs of BT changed over a period of time since they signed this contract. So we, as their one of their most important, the most important, and a trusted vendor, uh, they asked us that they need to restructure it because their business needs have changed. Obviously, we were uh, we were willing to take their uh, constraints into account and restructure it. Now, for the purposes of restructuring it, A, they were required to get, make some payment to us because the rates were brought down somewhat uniformly across the board. Consequently, they paid us some money up front and the rest we, they will pay us over a period of four years as we perform the services. Now, coming to the accounting treatment, that's fairly straightforward. The accounting treatment requires that in case there is a payment for a work which has to be completed over the next four to five years, the money has to be, the fund payment has to be amortized. Otherwise, you would end up by showing very high profits this year. And not only that, there would have to be a note in the accounts which would say that these profits are overestimated. Hmm. The, the, because the cost has to be incurred in future, therefore any revenue which has come on account of this contract has to be taken account of or note of only in future. Now this was our view, this was clearly the account, uh, our accountant's views, Deloitte, and on that basis this is about is being amortized. Fair point. In conversations with the channel over the last two weeks, Vineet, uh, Infosys, TCS and Wipro have stated that uh, the U.S. recovery and contribution to revenues is looking far better than what Europe is. You of uh, all the four of them, uh, if, you have, if I bracket you over there and perhaps even throw in an HCL tech, have the maximum exposure to Europe. Uh, does that mean that pricing as well as volume growth is going to take uh, a little more time for you to recover given the exposure to Europe that you have than perhaps some of your competitors that have a significant exposure to the 